So, hello and welcome to our today's uh, webinar. The special topic, um, data exchange with Argus and Symfony from Dundas to Stark um, with the support of Argus and Symfony. Um, just to introduce ourselves here, my name is Ralf Klimke. I'm responsible for sales and marketing at Argosense. Next to me, I have Christian Middle, who is responsible for development and services at Argosense, and we will guide you through today's webinar. Um, let's just have a look into the agenda. As you all know, um, today uh, we want to talk about the, let's say, the transition from, from uh, Dante uh, to, to Stark. I think um, all of you are already familiar with uh, the integration with your internal uh, system to, to Dante. And uh, we will show you uh, today how you could um, implement um, a solution like Augustin Symphony uh, in order to completely automate the process for supplier integration and automated data exchange. Um, which may give you a little bit more relief um, in terms of what you have implemented at the moment. So the target audience for today's webinar um, are people which have not been in contact with Argosense or Argosense Symphony so far. So we will also explain a little bit about the basics of our product. Um, the tomorrow uh, webinar, uh, this is intended for the people which are already Argosense customers. But anyway, if we have any customers here in the webinar today, you can remain, of course. Uh, maybe there's something uh, you can learn as well from, from what we are talking about today. That's no problem. Just for a clarification, so that if we have customers here in the webinar today, that they are not maybe not too bored because we are talking about basics. Um, so the agenda looks like... Um, you can see it here on the screen. Uh, we will talk a little bit about Argosense, then we will go a little bit, a bit in the um, details of uh, data exchange, or, uh, especially error management in the automotive world and how Symfony then can, can help you with that. And then we will talk about um, how you as a potential new customer can, can start with Argosense to directly connect your projects with the new Stark platform at Daimler. So a little bit about Argosense. So we have founded a company in 2009 um, where we specialized uh, in, in tool integration and automated data exchange. So from the beginning, uh, this was our main focus and this has not changed. Um, um, even besides, we decided a few years ago um, to spread our product portfolio a little bit and um, are offering a solution for requirements management and traceability since a few years. Um, very important for our customers has always been that all of all our employees have a strong expertise with all the leading ALM tools. So you internally are using tools like Polarion, PTC Integrity, and Jira, and whatever. And um, of course, we have a, a well-funded technical background with all these tools, which helps our customers a lot with uh, implementations and that's that because we have a very good understanding of the products, not only of our product, of course. Um, we have a very strong representation in the automotive industry. I think uh, revenue-wise, it's about 30 to 40 percent what we are doing with automotive customers and especially in the topic of the automated data exchange with all the different uh, supplier portals the OEMs are offering. Uh, we have a large variety of different projects uh, done in the last year, so there's a lot of expertise uh, in-house uh, with regards to that. Um, Product-wise, um, yeah, our development really focuses on, on, on market responses and uh, our customer requests, so uh, of course we are um, developing new products, new adapters to new tools, but uh, for existing products, for example, um, which are already used by our customers, the product development really is aligned with what our customers are requesting uh, with us. So I think and we are also very interactive in, in putting stuff into the product. So if any one of you may want to talk with any other custom of ours. Um, so this is an excerpt of our customer list. Um, yeah, just 
just let us know and we will establish a contact. So most of our customers, they are more than happy to exchange information with uh, and, and experience about Argosense with uh, other uh, potential customers here. Uh, so it's very welcome if you if you want have a request um, for um, a reference call or reference visit or whatever. As I said, we have uh, two products, Argus and Symphony, uh, which we want to talk about today for ALM tool integration and external data exchange and our requirements management product, which also can act as a traceability solution, let's say across different tools. So it's a very good combination because we can also, of course, use data we have, we have uh, in touch with Symphony, we can also represent in, uh, in Fidelia, for example. But coming back to, to Symphony, uh, so the, the basics of, of uh, the aspect of tool integration. So our customers are using Symphony, for example, to uh, integrate the tools they have internally uh, in their application lifecycle management. Not everybody has a has an application lifecycle management suite like PC Integrity or Polarium. Or even if they have that, they may still see that there are some aspects uh, in the tools which maybe uh, there are better alternatives for, like test management or requirements management. And uh, with Symphony, all these different tools can be <clears throat> connected with each other. Um, and it's not only a, a simple attribute mapping. Um, Usually our customers, they have um, completely different ideas on how systems should be um, integrated in terms of rules and business logic. And this can be customized in our solution as well, of course. And so most of our customers, I would say, they are driving kind of a best of breed um, approach, where they cherry pick the best tools in the respective area, like in test management or in defect management and use Symfony to combine them all together to a complete uh, and homogeneous uh, tool chain then in the end. So today we want to dive deeper a little bit in the topic of data exchange and here we are of course using the same product platform or Augustin Symfony um, but the I would say the use case is a little bit different so we extend the platform in a way that um, now you can also integrate your internal tools seamlessly with uh, for example the supplier portals in the automotive industry or if um, somebody external uh, opens for example a Jira system uh, and you have access to the Jira API we can also um, access to that directly and uh, simulate more or less um, a little bit wider ALM system. Um, so everything goes automatically depending on your rules into your internal systems and uh, your users do not have to do anything uh, with regards to administration. Everything is complete automated. In the special use case of uh, error management in the automotive industry there, I think are some special um, requirements, some special um, things we have to consider. First of all, talking about the technical connection, technical connection. typically we have two parties, supplier and, uh, and the customer or the OEM. OEM usually gives an order to the supplier. Um, and there's a development project starting, uh, for example, here with the control unit. Um, the supplier does his internal tests, of course, before he delivers anything to his to his customers. And you are using tools like, as I already mentioned, Jira, RTC, Integrity, whatever you like. Um, and now have to deliver at a certain stage of your development process a sample um, to the OEM, where the OEM himself does internal testing. And of course, the results uh, get feedback to, to the supplier. Usually the OEMs, they have uh, in the meantime, so-called supplier portals um, where they put their data either in form of an XML file with a certain format or they open it up with a REST API facade which then is connected with their internal system. So now the question is how does the data get back and forth between the two parties? That's what we want to talk about today, about the requirements, about the options and possibilities which are there. 
Um, situation we see as follows is that the OM usually determines the technical connection. That means they offer a, a portal or a product um, like what we want to talk about today, um, the Stark system, for example. But of course, there are the other OEMs have similar systems, um, similar in case that they are all technical connections, but um, the underlying technology usually is, is completely different. Um, some also offer, as I mentioned, a direct access to, to, a, to a tool which is already in the market, like Classian Jira, for example. Um, some offer an exchange via file format, usually or very often uh, with an OFTP server in between, and so on and so on. So this is the one, the one hand side, uh, which is usually, usually determined by the OEM, and of course, they determine the processes or workflow rules, data synchronization, attribute mapping. So kind of a supplier contract usually you have with your OEMs where everything is written down, um, what you have to consider in terms of exchanging data um, with your partner. So for example, that can look like that. Um, on the lower side, you see the, the um, the uh, OEM workflow for handling a new defect. And on the top side, you see, on the other side, you see um, how, for example, the, the supplier can, um, can act within his tool, so to say. And there are um, some points where data, where data gets um, transported between the systems, for example, in uh, the state of analyzed or realized or whatever uh, is, is a, a agreed with your with your customer and this has to be reflected in the in the product of course um, if you want to have a complete automated solution this must be somehow configured or customized uh, in, in a system other requirements uh, in terms of processes are of course you have to coordinate the oem given workflows with your internal workflow. So you usually have already a workflow implemented in your Jira or in your integrity system. And usually you do not want to change that because you probably do not have only one OEM as a custom, maybe several. So there must be some level of uh, um, product where you can bring these together and coordinate everything. Then of course you have to agree and align on a data and field mapping. Um, so for the, say the physical data, um, what should be exchanged. And of course, also for the sync services um, themselves, like reaction times, the synchronization intervals, and maybe any other rules which may apply in such kind of a scenario. From the technical perspective, um, yeah, you need to adapt to the specific format and API and, uh, and, and data format um, of the respective uh, supplier portal, of course. Then usually uh, it is um, it is requested that the data exchange should be completed completely automated without any manual interaction by by the developers. Um, everything should run in the background, so to say. And of course, um, you should be completely independent from from your internal tracking or change management tool because that may change in future or, or maybe. We have also customers, they have different um, tracking tools, but um, communicate, of course, with the same with the same customers. So there must be also a level of where you can reach much more independence from the tool itself. And of course, um, if you have a lot of customers and a lot of projects, scalability is the topic, of course, uh, in terms of high data volume or many exchange intervals. So that should also be considered. So what are the alternatives here? Uh, one alternative is, uh, and this is what uh, many of, the, I think all of the um, OEMs offer, kind of a web interface, which is um, nested in the, in the portal. But this means, I would say, duplicate data um, input, um, maybe copy and paste and, and stuff like that. So this is very error prone and um, not really practical, I think, and it's not very often really used. Then what we see a lot of, and I think a lot of from the participants today have um, self self programmed software in place um, where they um, have to take care about the API, which is offered uh, on the one hand side, on the OEM side, also on the tool side internally. Uh, this is really high effort and 
from the maintenance perspective, of, of course, uh, that should not be underestimated if new updates for the tools are coming or now we have the case that Daimler is really um, setting up a complete new infrastructure with complete new technology. Um, this has to be developed for each OEM again and again um, and so on. So what we recommend, of course, and uh, I think where our customers are very successful, is using a product like Argus and Symphony, where once installed, configured and customized, everything runs completely automated in the background, but you have enough flexibility um, to really spread that out to other projects with the same customers, to um, additional customers. Um, so there's a lot of, you can, can really um, get out of in terms of flexibility and extensibility. We offer so-called sync templates out of the box, uh, especially for Stark. Um, there's a template we have created um, working together with uh, Daimler and um, lead, lead customers, which are currently uh, connecting to Stark already. So that reduces the implementation time significantly. So we will talk about that later. And of course, if you want to add then several additional projects uh, within the same OEM system, of course, this is only configuration stuff, which usually really can be done by our customers by themselves. This is very important. And of course, uh, you can, if you like, use Symfony not only for the exchange with your customers, but also maybe you have uh, requirements in terms of tool integration internally, so you can use the same product for, uh, for different uh, aspects here. So going a little bit into the the architecture of, of Symfony um, is organized like kind of a bus system. So we simply connect to the different tools via adapters. So the adapters more or less are the normalization uh, contact point uh, into the tools API, where we understand the API and the syntax and the data format, which is completely uh, translated then into internally into our platform. So this is, I think, a major development effort you usually have, um, which is completely um, where you can relieve yourself completely with. We, are, we care about all the communication with the tools. And on, at the same time, we, of course, um, care about the communication, for example, with the, with, the form, uh, with the portals, also with the data format and uh, with, the, with the API syntax on format and everything. So what's remaining then using, using also the, the process templates is um, some configuration for that. Uh, Symfony offers a web interface where, for example, the mapping scenarios can be defined. Um, the, different uh, adapters can be configured and also the, let's say the process templates can be configured for, for um, certain aspects. So this is um, what on a very high level is uh, Symfony, uh, let's say containing of. So with that uh, different um, configuration options, we offer unlimited number of integration scenarios. So you can imagine that maybe uh, one project at Daimler has maybe a little bit another configuration than another project, so this can be reflected in Symfony as well. So it's not that there's only one configuration for everything. It's really you can you can have split that in different um, configuration scenarios. So and some very um, say sophisticated um, customers we have, which usually are using the product also for tool integration. Um, we offer a framework for the development of, of customer specific adapters. So it's the same framework we are using internally, of course, for developing adapters that's opened, open for customers that they can um, add own adapters to the platform and use the same technology also with the publicly available and commercially available um, adapters um, we, we are offering here. So this is um, this option is used very heavily in our customer base as well. So now coming back to the technical implementation, how could that look like with, with Symphony? So we know that picture from from the slide before. And now Symphony is installed at the supplier side. Um, we we just uh, install also the 
the correct uh, portal adapter. And this, in our case, it's a Stark adapter, which is then connecting with the Stark platform. And on the internal side, uh, of course, Symfony needs a tool adapter for the tool you are using. And that's pretty much it. So then we would be ready to exchange data, so to say. Um, and not just that you have only one customer, uh, usually, as I mentioned before, um, suppliers have more than one customer. So for example, they are connecting with the Stark system. They are connecting maybe with BMW, with the AC system, with Volkswagen, with Porsche, and so on. And uh, another level of complexity, of course, you do not have multiple customers. You, of course, have per customer multiple projects. And all this is, um, let's say, just configuration work in Symfony to make to make that available and to make that possible. So there's no need for, I don't know, copying any code or whatever. So it's really one product where you can configure all these complex uh, connections to your to your customers. And on the other hand side, of course, it could be used, for example, to connect your suppliers you have. So this is also a use case we see quite often. Okay, so now um, I finished the first part, so more the, more the overview, and we'll now have a look into uh, Argos and Symphony. So we will not show you a direct connection and an integration uh, running uh, between between Stark and another system, but we will show you a little bit about the configuration options and how this is looking like in, in Argus and Symphony. And after that, I think we can then, uh, we will then uh, talk a little bit about uh, the plan, how to get to Star connection and uh, go into the question and answer session here. So now I will change my screen to Christian's machine, just a second. Yes, so now we are ready. Just removing the mouse. Yeah, so now, Christian, we can Thanks, go on. Ralph. So, what I have prepared is, um, is a system that reflects um, a typical installation that you would take um, to get a start project running. So, first of all, what I have installed in Symfony is the Stark adapter itself. It is um, prepared to get in touch with the uh, with the Stark system. Does all the authentication stuff. Does all the exchange of the data model, um, and up to the point where, where we can finally then um, um, uh, grab tickets, upload tickets, um, work with attachments, work with comments. Um, so it's kind of the basic feature set. Um, we have been in close cooperation with, uh, with other people also to align um, the feature set with, um, with the overall process that is, that is intended. I have example-wise installed uh, another adapter, so like a Jira adapter. This is usually then your end of the story. Could be an integrity adapter, Polarian adapter, whatever. Um, for these adapters, there's usually um, a, a configuration that needs to be taken. Like, for example, I can just jump into, into JIRA, um, where we give all the necessary parameters uh, to set up the connection. So this, these are very basic steps. In terms of the Stark adapter, um, we believe that the connection uh, for most of the future projects will be quite simple, because I've heard that end of February, um, the stock system will be available uh, publicly in the internet. So uh, we usually might just want to set up a proxy. So I'll just go and say this is my first project. So a project connection might be required. Um, and then inside that configuration, we, we will just point to the uh, to the stock system itself. Then you will be given an application ID and token, and then uh, we'll have to fill in the project key that we're working with. And as you can see, there's a couple of, say, network-related um, configurations as well that that's going to may, maybe then connect Symfony server to the internet. Um, the other thing that I have installed is what we call our, our basic uh, process template. This is kind of a uh, kind of a collection of all the best practices we have developed over the past 10 years and helps us to speed um, speed up the um, implementation of the process itself. 
And as an example, I have been now installing also a very um, initial version of the Star Jira integration. Uh, this is then a more detailed um, description of how uh, the Star system integrates with Jira specifically. So the process itself is, is going to control, um, uh, for example, the management of the comments. So this is a quite different topic between the tools, like the way Stark and Jira are handling the comments is quite similar, but there could be also systems that do not have very strong common capabilities. So those kind of tool specific uh, configurations then will end up in the, in the process. Um, these are the basic components that we will have to install in the system. And then there's two more things that needs to be done. Um, first of all, um, this is what our mapping module reflects. Um, so I have just been setting up a very default mapping configuration. So what we can see here is a mapping scenario and those mapping scenarios is the main work that needs to be done. So uh, for all the various situations and use cases that we bump in, um, when integrating the stock system, you will have to set up a translation of the data modeling between your system and the stock system. That's done in mapping scenarios. It's quite also flexible. So in, in terms of like if there's, there's changes uh, down the road, that can be easily adjusted in, in the web interface here. And I can just set up more attributes here, like I can just navigate into it and select whatever attributes. Um, the last piece of the configuration is then the schedule itself. Um, I just set up a schedule uh, for, for our first project. And as you can see, this is pretty much a cron type setup. So it's going to take you through all the details. And then we can reflect all the agreements that have been taken with Daimler in terms of the frequency of the exchange. And then uh, Symphony is going to manage, manage uh, the execution of the, of the jobs in the background automatically. So um, besides that, we do have a, a diagnose module in Symfony. This is usually going to show us the live status of the system. So it's going to come up with all the uh, projects that, that are currently synchronized. It's going to show the progress um, of those. And Symfony also comes with a reporting module. And in that reporting module, we're going to collect all the problems that are, that are upcoming. So from any, from any um, from any issue we bump into, we get a record here also on the on the web screen, and then we can debug deeper from that and, and uh, work on the resolution. So that is pretty much everything that needs to be done um, on the on the Symphony side. Um, and uh, then one of the one of the main tasks, obviously, is 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 going to be uh, uh, to walk, walk through the testing uh, with uh, with the Star team. So Ralph, that's pretty much everything from my side here. Yes, great. So that uh, about the, the steps and testing everything, we will talk in a few seconds. Uh, one question from my side. So how if, if I want to have additional projects, so I'm um, usually the suppliers do not have only one project with Stark uh, or with Daimler in future. So am I right if we just have to do multiple configurations and, and, and maintain the projects from there. That's a good point. So um, you would come up with a second project here, and you would then also come up, say, with a with maybe more mapping, say, that's the second project. We also do offer an inheritance mechanism in the mapping. So if, if let's say, some of the aspects are pretty similar in between the projects, you could cover them with a basic, a basic mapping. Um, and then I can just carry on and do the mapping. And then finally, also, I'd, I uh, should not forget to set up the schedule. So I would also come up with a schedule for the second project. Um, give like all the details. Um, and then have the process configuration and then jump into the second pro. It should be really selected. Jump into the second project and that's it. Oh, interesting. So that's really just point and click uh, configuration and can be done in a, with a few mouse clicks. That's exactly. really great. Exactly. Okay, perfect. So I will switch over. Find my mouse pointer here. I will switch over to the presentation. I have two additional slides for a few other aspects um, in terms of functionality of, of Argus and Symphony before we 
continue here. Um, one is related to scalability, which I already mentioned, uh, but just for clarification, Augsburg Symphony offers um, horizontal load balancing, uh, which is capable for as a failover technology at the same at the same time. So we have customers where Symphony is really used to exchange with a lot of OEMs and and and, and projects, and that is in in, in uh, over time gets of course kind of a really critical uh, data backbone so we absolutely encourage our customers to set up a kind of a redundancy in the system so just install a second uh, argus and symphony we call it cluster node this is a second symphony installation um, ideally on a, on a second hardware um, and then uh, with a few mouse clicks of configuration um, the the cluster nodes know of each other and will act as a, as a horizontal um, horizontal cluster base, so to say, where the load of the jobs will be automatically uh, balanced. And if one server is failing for some reason, the other server is taking over all all the work from the first from the first uh, server or from the starting server, so to say, and will operate everything from from its base. So this is also completely automated technology in, in the background then. Um, second thing is a few a few smaller things. Of course, processes can be um, executed uh, in parallel um, with, with Argus and Symphony. Uh, so you, if you have different connections within, with, uh, for example, Stark or to other OEMs, they can be run in parallel, of course. Um, then the events, so the, let's say the synchronization um, execution can be triggered either by uh, the schedule, what we have seen right now in the system, or it can be also triggered by maybe an event if you if you really have critical projects, maybe where you have the requirement for data exchange in uh, very short intervals, then you can say, okay, if a JIRA item has changed, the status has changed, then you can also immediately um, synchronize the changes to the other system in both directions, of course. Um, then we have an, a layer which we have not talked about. That's our persistence module. It's in, in fact, it's a database where we are storing different information um, about the synchronization executions. So for example, what we are storing is the, the different IDs, which are of course connected with each other. So you do not ha uh, have to, for example, um, change your data model in your, uh, in, in your change management tool and, and uh, store the the corresponding ID of the um, of the Stark um, issues, for example, that can also be stored in Argus and Symphony. And additionally, we are um, storing information about the synchronization themselves. So that, as a result, then um, we just um, synchronize data which really has been changed in one of the systems, and do not steadily synchronize everything maybe which is belonging to a project only really the data that has been changed over but between two synchronization runs so to say i think that's also very very important for you um, as an information um, so that's the reason why i did not want to hide that from you so now let's go um, into uh, the options how we usually would set up a new project um, with Stark or with any other uh, OEM, so to say. So first of all, of course, it's necessary to have Symphony, including the necessary adapters, so they can be licensed separately. So you do not have to license all the adapters we are offering, only the ones you need, of course. So in this case, one for Stark and your individual uh, ticket or change or LM tool. Um, next one would of course, uh, the, be the installation and uh, from for Symphony the adapters and also the template. So that is what we have seen also here in, uh, in, in Christian's presentation, and also the configuration. And we offer, of course, a, a short training for for the configuration of Symphony. You have seen here it's quite simplistic. So if you are using our standard template, and I think for Stark there is not not a big necessity to change anything into in, in within the template so this is really just some some configuration you have to do but should never be underestimated there's still some need for um, testing the connection of course and also functional testing so there's um, this is something um, where we where we support you 
Um, that's all, let's say, still internal, so to say. Um, this is something which we offer as a two days quick start package that should be, uh, we believe, sufficient uh, in time with the latest uh, version of our of our Symphony platform and uh, the combination of adapters and the process template um, that should really be sufficient um, to get the system up and running. Um, but then, of course, um, there's still some necessity to do the customer acceptance testing. So maybe there are, any, especially with Stark as a completely new product, there may be a little bit more effort uh, for fine tuning and, and um, see if the data um, is really coming into the systems on both sides as expected from both parties. Um, so there's some alignment which has to be done. Um, this can be done by yourselves. After you have, after you know how to configure uh, the system, this is maybe change in mapping, or maybe there are some mandatory fields or whatever stuff like that that should be um, considered. Um, this, there's not much help ne necessary from us, but of course, if you like, we can help you with that anyway. Okay, so this is uh, more or less what we wanted to show. Uh, today so if you have any questions we are more than happy i'm just opening here my okay so now the first questions are coming in um first of all of course the question regarding uh, pricing so um i cannot currently talk about pricing i would encourage you that you get in touch with uh, with our sales um, I think you will receive an email um, after the meeting. Everything, as you have probably seen, is recorded. So if you wanna, um, if you if you want to review something, uh, you also get the slides, get a link to the slides, and I think our our sales will will then contact you um, and give you all the information. Maybe give you a quotation or whatever you need, so that you are in a position to to make the right decision here, also regarding costs. Uh, then another question, how is the Stark template installed? Um, I'm not sure. I can, Are you have it, you had it already installed? Yeah, already? it was pre-installed. I just, I just, just a second. Ah, um, yeah, just a <laughs> second. I will, I will change the screen again back to Christian and then you can see the five or three mouse clicks yeah, how to install. I just pre-installed it so like I can also uninstall it from the interface and then um, that's the component that we are going to ship uh, for the specific tool compilation, like Stark and whatever you're running in the background. And then it's just this one component. I can install it through the browser. That's that's it. Exactly. So you get the the template, and in this in this case, it's um, it's already let's say configured um, to work between Stark and Jira, but this is. Um, also, just some some configuration action to make it then available with your respective tool, like RTC or whatever you have. Okay, there's another question about costs. Again, um, I would refer to to our sales because I do not want to tell you anything wrong uh, here, of course. They can really make your quotation, which is completely um, targeted up to your needs. Also, in terms of uh, in terms of maintenance or what kind of licensing options we have, you can uh, license the product um, as a usual permanent perpetual license, or you can also we have a kind of a term licenses if you like. So there are different options here. But what I can say is that Symphony is always license on a per server basis so it's not uh, we do not count any any users uh, you have in your system uh, nor do we count any number of projects so it's really completely open how many projects you configure how many um, adapters you install this is this is all um, licensed on the server base here um, then there is a question is there a graphical interface to support the changes of the process uh, within the template um, 
so I believe for the start template, for example, I think that is a very fixed process. That's I think there is things. not a lot of not 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 a lot of change necessary. No, there will no uh, uh, absolutely be no change. It's like uh, the same the same kind of path we did for all the OEM integrations now. Like CAEZ on the BMW side is also a fixed process. We've been undergoing like I think 22 projects uh, with the same template. And should there be any kind of deviation, then we would uh, would make sure we introduce it into the template. So there's absolutely no reason for you to work on the process templates anymore. But for other products or for other tool integrations, so to say, of course, uh, customers can change the templates, or we can change them for you. But it's uh, it's uh, the I templates just, are. I just spoke to the start uh, okay. solution. Uh, the templates are Java based, so this is very easy to to. So there's no special knowledge uh, like with older versions of Symfony for for the people process language. So we have changed that completely to something which is uh, much more common technology. Um, then there's the question: Is is this concept to copy data, or is it only links between the systems? Uh, yes, of course, this is really copying the data. Um, I believe sharing only links between two systems which are hosted. Uh, I would say all, that's not at all the stocks. Uh, I mean, like uh, the stock approach is really that um, that Daimler people do run a, a system which consolidates all the all the supplier information, and that's where we have to drop the information. So that's how the interface is built. Um, it is also not, I think, intended from a security point of view that you're going to, going to exactly. work with things, right? I think connecting external systems, uh, this is really would really be a, a security problem and also a reliability, reliability problem, I think. Um, then, does the template depend on existing adapters which are already installed? And does it contain the business logic, mapping fields, scheduling? So, um, so the template will be configured to the adapters you have installed. And it does contain the business logic, of course, yes. Uh, it does not contain the mappings and the scheduling. So this is something which has to be configured because we do not know the mapping fields you have or the, the fields you have in, in your internal system. They can be completely different uh, from your company to another company or even from project to project. And also the schedules and everything. So this is something um, which is, of course, not delivered uh, within, the, uh, within the template. So this will be configured individually. And you have seen it how this works uh, as christian showed so it's just a few mouse clicks and this of course the mappings and the scheduling they are not system wide they are also uh, based on on the on, let's say the project um, you are exchanging data with um hardware requirements um also for that i so we have we we see your your questions here and who is who is uh, asking them so I will advise um, our sales that you will receive the, the hardware requirements for the system. So it's all documented in our in our administration uh, manual. Um, I do not know them out of my head, so, so um, we will we will get them to you, of course. Um, there is one ex, uh, extension to the question regarding changing of the process, uh, which is for adding email notification. Um, I think um, email notification, from, from what I know, usually these are the, the, the kind of, of the system yeah, which are the, which, the kind of approach we are going going to go with the Symphony product uh, to, to make a make a short comment on that one here is is uh, to have rather. Um, with, that, with the next version of Simplicity, we are going to come with a dashboard that's also going to integrate a role um, which, which will help integrate your project-related change managers into the whole system rather than um, bugging them with email notifications. So um, if, there, if, if you want to force us to, to do that, we can, we can do it. But uh, the, Symphony, the Symphony roadmap is going to go into a different direction. Yeah, so if you're talking about email notification regarding, um, regarding um, let's say, updates of the tickets, I think usually this can be handled in the, in the 
connected systems like in Jira or PTC or whatever. I think these tools support support usually uh, email notifications for change data. Um, if it's internally for from an administrative perspective regarding Symfony, um, the question is like, like Christian already answered, so that we are um, going maybe a little bit different approach uh, uh, rather than uh, email notifications. I think this is also outdated in the meantime. I think there are better options. Um, Oh, that's an interesting question. Sometimes the network connection may fail for some time, for whatever reason. How do you manage uh, the updated information in the tools in this time period? Or generally, how do you how do we how do we handle uh, network outages or stuff like that? I think that's a good question. Yes, what you can do. It's part of the process configuration itself. I can show a little bit of that. Um, so we go into the process configuration. And I will be like here. And there's a couple of, of generic um, generic um, items that we have. So, for example, uh, the retry behavior. We can just uh, decide whenever uh, whenever there's a bug. Uh, we want to retry. We want to retry three times, and we want to have one minute in between in between the systems. Um, the other option is uh, it's pretty much also then depending on the um, on the system on the other side is whether we go into a failure directly or we just go into a pause uh, pause situation um, and continue after the next uh, successful connect is possible. Um, to be honest, in the moment I do not have any experience on on how the stock system is gonna is gonna behave in the network, but we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna manage it through configurations like this. There's another uh, question on email notifications, just like the, the comment I made I made previously. Um, I have been I've been traveling around a lot last year to major customers, and, and we have decided to um, to really introduce a dashboard into the system, which which is going to cover um, all the information that has previously been put into emails, like did did the process work, how many items were synchronized, how many items were updated, uh, what were the problems, and such. And uh, really, in, in the next major Symphony version, that's going to be available in the interface. And it's also, from a role-based model, uh, be available to people that are managing uh, the exchanges on the project side. So that rather rather than than sending around emails, you will you will just create logins for those people that can then look up in the morning and at lunchtime and whenever they expect any any movement, they can they can then look up what's going on in the system. And again, I mean, there's a couple. Of, there's a couple of questions coming towards like any kind of failure scenarios, like if the process fails. Again, uh, the way how Symfony is going to treat it, it's going to detect the failure, and then it's going to um, it's going to it's going to allow you to um, to retry the process. However, if it's a business rule uh, that is affected, um, of course, um, we do have a mechanism in Symphony that puts the item itself into into a non hold mode. That item is going to be reported, um, and then you can you can work on the manual re resolution of that. Like maybe the, the workflow is is wrong on your end, the workflow is wrong on uh, Stark end, and once the item is resolved, you can just you can just uh, put it back um, into the synchronization. Okay, so as I said, um, the meeting is recorded. You will receive a link to to view the recorded webinar again uh, a link to the presentation you have seen uh, you will get you will see uh, here our contact options and um, i think um, as a follow-up you will receive an email of course with all the links and you will also receive the email with uh, contact persons so you know how to how to ask for a quotation or for more information um, if some other uh, questions come into your mind later um, 
Okay, there are still two questions I, I will go through before we before we end then for today. Uh, so one question is, do we have to pay for updates or are they included? So um, with a valid maintenance contract or if you uh, choose for the term license model where you per, uh, pay for the yearly usage, uh, then of course all updates, uh, for example, for the, the Stark adapter and also for the adapters uh, you are using internally are uh, included as well as updates for the Symfony platform uh, itself, of course. And the second question, we already have a Dante adapter and do we have uh, to license the Stark adapter separately? The answer is yes, this is a complete different product and uh, the Dante still is running uh, until end of this year and uh, end of October. Um, so if you want to connect both, um, then of course you... Okay, so great. So then let's sum up. Thanks to everybody um, for participating. Um, it was very interesting, a lot of questions. Um, and uh, for ones of you maybe who want to recap tomorrow there's again a webinar which is i think quite shorter because we are we will not talk about uh, symphony let's say specifics uh, more about um, how to get to uh, stark and also for existing customers talk about migration from dante to stark i think there's also some aspects which have to be considered um so thanks again um enjoy the rest of your week and uh, hope to see or hear you again soon. Bye-bye.